excellent power panel for you today. Steve Kornacki is back. I, I don't know why, but Steve, I want to call you the Kornacki. <laughs> I like your last name. It sounds, <laughs> it sounds strong. Of course, Steve's from Salon. Uh, Nagin Frasad joins us for the first time. She's a comedian and filmmaker. Great to have you here, Nagin. And uh, Zach Thanks Carter. Thanks for having me. Yes. And Zach Carter, of course, a senior political reporter for Huffington Post. He's back as well. Uh, first topic is, do primaries make you stronger or do they make you weaker? Let's listen to Mitt Romney on that issue. A competitive primary does not divide us, it prepares us, and we will win. Steve, here's my sense of that. Uh, I think that he is generally right about that. Uh, I would agree with him. I think the Democrats should have a lot more primaries. I think the Hillary Clinton, Obama primary generally helped, uh, but not in this case. They have been so vicious to one another. I think this is probably the exception that proves the rule. Thoughts? Yeah, I, I mean, I, I tend to agree. I mean, the one sort of cautionary note I'd throw in is that a lot of times, you know, when, when it looks clearly like there's been damage in a primary season, it can be sort of a mirage. The example I always think of is that when Bill Clinton came through the, the Democratic primaries in 1992, he looked like the most damaged nominee that, that a major party had, had ever nominated. Um, and, and he was running distant third place at that point behind Perot and Bush Sr., we now remember him as the master politician who couldn't lose an election, so things can change quickly. The problem with Romney in, in his primary, at least as I see it, is the damage that's been done is very specific. The source is very specific. It's all the attention that's been paid to his income taxes, to his business background, to things like that. And it's taken place, the damage has occurred with blue-collar swing voters. You know, that's in the Republican primaries, he does much better with rich Republican voters than he does with working in middle-class Republican voters. And in the past month, among general election voters, his standing with blue-collar general election voters, these are the swing voters who are probably going to decide this thing. It's fallen like 20 points. So right. I, I think it's, it's not so much just the damage that's happening now. It's, there's a recipe here that's, that's sort of been exposed. Right. Nagin, you know, his unfavorables have doubled uh, since the primaries began. So in this case, is Newt Gingrich uh, in doing some serious damage that maybe even President Obama couldn't have done to Mitt Romney? Well, I mean, I, I think the entire Republican Party is doing enough damage for the entire Republican Party. I mean, I don't think going through this tough primary is going to make them stronger. I think it's showing them to be schizophrenic. You know, they're trying to be anti-gay but not homophobic. They're trying to be pro-business but also pro-offshore banking. Uh, and they, I feel like they're suffering from a multiple personality disorder. You know what I mean? And they don't even know who the base is. Is the base the Tea Party? Is the base uh, uh, sci-fi nerds who like moon landings? Is the base a, a post-mortem baptismal enthusiast. Who is the base? So I feel like we're watching the Republican Party trying to define the Republican Party. Uh, by the way, Newt Gingrich, with all that moon landing stuff, lost that county uh, that had NASA in it anyway. <laughs> so that, that was kind of interesting. So uh, now, and by the way, I know who their base is. It's the top 1%. It's their donors that they're trying to appeal to. That's, that's really the difference. But Zach, you know, uh, as we were having this conversation, uh, I think I came to a, a realization of why the damage might in some ways help. And the reason is, by the time you get to the general election, you go, oh, come on, that's old news. How many times are you reporters going to bring that up about my problems with Bain Capital or whatever it might be? Uh, so do you think that phenomenon could help the Republican? Well, you even saw that with Newt Gingrich in some of the debates, the way he dismissed questions about his, uh, his sort of sexual past. Uh, I think... One thing that really happens as a result of this very prolonged and ugly primary process is that the actual media coverage ends up being skewed very hard towards the conservative side of the ledger. Everything that people are talking about on cable news today happens to be some hardline conservative issue. Fox Day was talking about whether or not birth control should be covered by private insurance. This is ridiculous. We, we decided this in 1965. It's over. Grow up. Uh, but what you're going to see uh, from now until the end of this primary fight is conservatives going on TV and talking about conservative issues to a conservative base over and over and over again. And that makes whoever ends up winning the primary, uh, it means they're going to be fighting the, the general election on a much more conservative playing field than they would be otherwise. And that's a great point, too. And by the way, man, if Democrats, they should take Newt's advice from 34 years ago, the one I said in the beginning of the show, it's time to get nasty. I mean, these guys are running against birth control? Oh, have at it, horse! 99% of the country believes in birth control. I'd beat the living daylights out of them with that issue. So, yeah, please listen to Fox News. Do us all a favor. All right, now i got to uh, move on to the second topic, and it's basically, is Rick Santorum done? I want to show you one clip from last night that I thought was in really weak sauce. Let's watch. Governor Romney, you have every right to go out into the private sector and 
and and use the the gifts that God has given you and the opportunities that you had and that you made for yourself and your hard work and make all the money that that you can and and do it in a way that helps our economy and and certainly helps you and your family and I'm not going to criticize you for doing that because that's how capitalism works and I'm all for it I, I got to be brutally honest here. I saw that and I thought, loser. I mean, Newt Gingrich is measuring the drapes in the Oval Office. Yeah, he might be crazy, but at the same time, at least the guy is confident. At least he wants to win, and you can tell, right? Santorum's like, please, please, pick me as your VP, Mitt Romney. Nagin, isn't that the sense you got from that speech? No, it's really sad. And the biggest boost Santorum got today was that he picked up an endorsement from Tancredo. And Tancredo is known for losing a gubernatorial race, losing a presidential race. And I guess he's also known for being anti-Muslim. So if he's trying to cinch in that Colorado loser slash anti-Muz vote, maybe Santorum could make the smallest of dents. But I just don't think there's enough numbers there for that. But I mean, there's one thing that Santorum has always has given us, and that's that frothy comment, uh, bodily fluid combination um, that's a byproduct of a sexual act and you know what thank you that is the best Google mishap ever and you and we can just be thankful for that and move on from Santorum I'm gonna miss the vests of course no question about that if he's gone but so uh, Steve let's talk about that his new uh, line of thinking was like wait a minute wait a minute I got it right says Newt couldn't win in Florida that must mean the only conservative left in the race that could beat Mitt Romney is me is that convincing to anyone no, I don't think so. I mean, I, I certainly understand why he stayed in through Florida, because I, I could see it was remote, it was distant, but I think the scenario would have been, okay, look, Romney's on the ropes, Gingrich is ascendant after South Carolina, then Gingrich goes into Florida, gets this big win, and Romney just completely melts down, and the party elders sort of look up and say, you know, holy cow, we're going to nominate Newt Gingrich, we better go with this other guy standing, Rick Santorum. But in the wake of Florida, where, yeah, you know, Gingrich got pummeled, Santorum, you know, didn't even get half of Gingrich's vote total. I think about, you know, 13%. Um, yeah, I, I don't see where there's a comeback. He doesn't have the money. Uh, he, clearly, he just doesn't seem to, to click with the Republican base that well, even though, you know, for the entire campaign, he's been the most logical one on paper when you look at the issues that supposedly animate them. But it hasn't caught on by now. I don't see how it's going to start catching up. Yeah, well, my favorite argument is Gingrich couldn't win in Florida, so it's got to be me. But you also couldn't win in Florida. In fact, you lost by a much wider margin. It's a weird argument. Zach, last uh, word goes to you here. If you think Santorum is done, does that mean uh, Gingrich has an, a solid chance of beating Romney if he picks up those votes? Well, I think it's been between Gingrich and Romney all along. I mean, Santorum's main claims to fame are, are being really like afraid of gay people uh, being in love and of birth control. I just that the idea that that guy was ever going to be a serious candidate for president in, a, in an election year which is dominated by jobs and the economy was just ludicrous. Uh, but Mitt Romney and Newt Gingrich both have very deep ties to the Republican establishment, also to the financial donor base of the Republican establishment. I mean, Mitt Romney kind of is the financial donor base of the Republican establishment. <laughs> so uh, I, th those two were always going to be uh, the, the two that, that had a chance to stay in it for a long time, and I think that's where we are now. All right, guys, you've been a great panel. Steve Nagin and Zach, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And when we come back...